So welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we're going to talk about growth versus value investing. And here I have actually laid down seven differences or considerations we'll be going through. So let's talk about this one by one. Now, first, what is growth investing? Growth investing mainly focuses on investing in companies that grow. I mean, no, duh, it's quite straightforward. And value investing focuses on investing in companies that are under its intrinsic value. What does that really mean? It means that the company is at a discount. So if you go to Walmart and you buy a shirt that is normally for $20, you try to buy it at 15. That is value investing. So during the good times, which one will make more money? So when you're looking at growth investing versus value investing, during the good times, growth will have more hype. It is more popular. So then it will make more money. And value investing, you know you are getting it at a discount, so you have more certainty that you will make money, but then you wouldn't be making as much money compared to growth investing. So an example of growth investing is usually around small cap to medium cap stocks that their business is expanding. So this is usually technology companies that might not be profitable immediately, or they have very good financial prospects and they're able to expand very quickly um, by getting more market share. Now for value investing, these companies are usually more stable. They don't have crazy growth rates like 10, 20, 30% uh, per year revenue growth. And their growth rate is closer to something like five, six, 7%, what you would expect closer to the annual GDP growth of the United States. Now, during the bad times, which one is better? So growth investing is all fun and games until the bad times hit. And that's when you will realize what drawdown is. So that's when the stock prices start going down a lot. And for growth investing, because the fundamental side is weaker, so investors will likely to dump it first compared to a lot of value stocks. And the drawdown will be higher than value investing. Now, when you're looking at value investing, because you're already buying at a discount, the drawdown will be a lot less, which is great. So that offers you more protection. So when you think about investing, right? Growth investing is really very offensive investing strategy where value investing is more defensive. So it's about risk management. You might not grow as quickly, but you know you're getting a good deal and it's very hard for you to lose money. Now, one of the questions I always get when it comes to during the bad times or bear market is whether value investing will have drawdown as well. And the answer is yes, it will. But the drawdown will be less than growth investing. And the reason is because Let's go back to the Walmart example. Let's say you're buying this stock or shirt for $15, which originally was $20. And let's say the price of the shirt goes down a little bit more, you know, $12, $10. But at that point, you already got it at a discount. So it still hurts. There's still drawdown, but then you're more protected than growth investing where you would buy the shirt at $20. So next, let's talk about the common mistake with growth investing. Now, because usually these stocks are smaller, you know, small cap, medium cap, investors usually they don't focus on fundamental analysis. They focus on technical analysis. And if you end up investing in the growth stock that have good technical analysis, but really bad fundamental analysis, then when the bear market hits, you will have very little chance of recovering. So that's when you see people losing 50, 60% just on the stock price alone, sometimes even 90% um, on the stock price alone without even using any options. And sometimes if you're investing in a stock with bad fundamentals, uh, bad business models, then it might not ever recover. Uh, so as of this moment, one of the examples would be GoPro where it used to have a lot of hype, but then afterwards it dropped for a long time. 
and then it didn't recover still um, and price has been staying low ever since. Now, what is the biggest challenge with value investing? And after talking to a lot of people, it really comes down to understanding the financial statements because most people are not trained in the financial accounting side of things. So when you pick up a financial report, you actually don't know what to look for. You know, look at income statements, the financial statement notes, the management discussion and analysis. There's actually a lot of content to go through that is required by SEC to publish. So even though there is a wealth of information in these financial reports, it doesn't necessarily mean you can extract the useful signals per se out of that financial report to know what to look for. Now, let's talk about momentum, crash, and recovery. So when you're looking at these three terms, they're actually connected. So when you're looking at a, a stock, initially you have the stock price going up, which has a lot of momentum. And this will be true for growth and value investing. And then afterwards, you get a crash. And during the crash, growth investing will get hurt a lot because you usually don't buy it at a discount because you're trying to ride the hype train. Um, so during the crash, it will go down a lot. Whereas value investing, this is where you shine because during the crash or after the crash, you will be buying that stock at a cheap price. So then you move on to the third phase, which is the recovery phase. So when you're looking at the recovery phase for growth investing, there is actually a high likelihood you will never recover. And that is because when you're looking at a small medium company, they are not able to raise cash that well. And if they are not able to raise debt and their share price is low, they actually cannot raise that much cash without diluting a lot of their shares. So this makes recovery especially hard for small medium companies and that is driven by growth. So you can think of the 2000.com crash, you can think of the 2008 crash, you can think of COVID and the technology correction recently where a lot of small medium companies, they went down and they haven't come back since then. For recovery, this is really where value investing makes money because you invest after the crash, you have that recovery, and then you go back to the momentum phase. So once you recover, then everyone is happy again and start investing in growth and these value stocks, which may not be at a discount anymore. And then the cycle repeats until the next crash. So when you take a step back and you ask yourself, should you choose growth investing or value investing? I think what you're really trying to get at is the objective. In order for you to make it a capital appreciation in the market, you want the stock price to go up. In order for you to have capital appreciation, you're looking for a change in price. So if you think in terms of that direction, then you will arrive at that growth and value investing is actually the same thing. Because even for value investing, you still want the company to grow. It's just a matter of at which point in time you invest in the stock. So then it comes down to the age old question of can you time the market? And a short answer, spoiler alert, is yes, you can. Growth investing, they focus on investing when there's momentum. Value investing focuses on investing after the crash and take advantage of the recovery and momentum. So that is really the key distinction. Because at the end of the day, if you invest in a discounted stock, but then it has no growth, then the stock price wouldn't go up anyways. So that's why this cycle is consistent between the two investing approaches. And it's just a matter of which time you invest in. And as an investor, your goal is to enter as cheaply as possible. And over the years, I've worked with a lot of people to master investing, to learn investing. Um, and I find that from an emotional perspective, it is actually better to be a value investor. Because if you invest in a momentum stock and then suddenly a bear market hits you, then you will feel like you're very unlucky and you will feel like you made a mistake or whatnot. Whereas if you follow value investing first and you try to get in at a discount, 
then at least you already got in at a low price compared to everyone else. You know that the bear market might last a little bit longer. And when it recovers, you're going to be one of the first ones to be green again. So that is really a trade-off between perspective, patience, and timing. So if you like this kind of animated video and how I explain growth and value investing, then leave me a comment below and hit like to let the YouTube algorithm know. So if you want to learn how I time the market in terms of top and bottoms, then you can consider getting my technical analysis template. So it's actually another YouTube video I have on the channel. I'll give you a link in the end screen here, uh, just around here, so we can click on it, and I would recommend you to watch that video. It's a free template you can get, and it's a one-click installation, so it should be quite straightforward.